Here's your Money Briefing for Tuesday, September 12th. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal. Monthly rent is already squeezing the household budget of many tenants, but a growing list of fees levied by landlords is adding to that pain. Wall Street Journal reporter Will Parker joins me. So, Will, let's start with just the monthly rent. You were with us on several occasions in the middle of the pandemic talking about how rents were rising in some cases as much as 25 percent. What's been the track of rents since then? Over the last year, rents have started to flatten out a little bit, and they're not growing nearly as much as they were. And in some places, they're shrinking somewhat. But you know, overwhelmingly, rent is so much more expensive now still than it was three years ago, even given that kind of contraction happening now. And it's especially notable in suburbs where the rise in rents was even greater than it was in, in cities. And so we're seeing that trend sustained as well. And as you've reported, landlords have begun tacking on an assortment of fees on top of the monthly rent. Fees for what? Fees for anything that they can put a name on. A lot of fees have been around in the apartment industry for a long time. There'd really been, you know, a handful that you would commonly see. Things like a a pet deposit or a fee for management of the utilities, usually pretty small. But over the years, there's just been more and more of these tacked on. and A lot of tenants are starting to get really fed up with them. And many of the services are not optional. One of the most common ones is what's called valet trash, where instead of walking your, your trash to the dumpster, you're required to set it out in front of your unit and pay $30, $40 a month for someone to then carry it to the dumpster for you. And it, it can add a lot of extra money on to the rent every year. Yeah. How much money are these fees adding to tenants' monthly bills? So a lot are pretty small, but you know, if you put them all together, it's not uncommon for the, to add hundreds of dollars a year or, or more to people's rent at a time when landlords are not able to raise rents at, at quite as much as they were. There are some that see uh, you know, ways to increase the revenue through different fees, adding new fees increasing the price of fees and seeing if you know, they can still keep tenants if they'll if they'll just pay them instead of moving. In some cases, the services that landlords are charging for with these fees aren't new, like the garbage fee. I mean, taking the garbage out to the curb is not a new service. Why are they charging for them now? What the landlords them- themselves say is that this is a way for them to account for their higher operating costs and the fees help them meet that. Other skeptics say with rents pushing these new levels and going so high, there's a lot of sticker shock happening among tenants. So there's a certain utility in being able to advertise a house for rent for $2,000, but then really being able to get something closer to like $2,150 through an assortment of fees. And that there's a kind of a game being played with the consumer psychology here that they'll be more comfortable taking that $2,000 house with maybe some fees on the side than if you simply charge $2,150. Now, let's say somebody's in the market for a new apartment. The monthly rent is probably clearly noted in a listing, but are the fees? So that varies wildly right now. So sometimes you'll see an apartment listing on the website of a certain landlord and it will list all the fees, but other times it won't. And many times tenants don't really find out about all the fees that they'll be required to pay until they're ready to sign a lease. And that could be a problem because by that point, they've often paid a lot in application fees, sometimes something called a holding fee, which can be several hundred dollars. And then they're stuck in this place where they're ready to move and didn't quite realize the unit is going to be a little bit more expensive than they thought it was. Now, this might be a silly question, but how's this going over with tenants? Fees have been poorly received by tenants. And you've even had cases where tenants try to sue landlords over the way they charge fees. There have been class actions against large property owners over fees, most commonly late fees and how those are charged. How much you can charge for a late fee is is regulated in, in some states. And many tenants have alleged that the fees that they've paid are just disproportionate to, you know, whatever damage they've done to a multi-billion dollar landlord by paying rent one day late. And so we'll continue to see those kind of complaints as fees become increasingly common in this industry. Is there anything tenants can do to avoid these fees? You could try your best to make sure you know what they're going to be up front, you know, asking the listing agent or the landlord if there are any fees that will be charged in addition to that, you know, visiting the the owner's website if they have one to see what kind of fee information might be detailed there, or simply avoiding units or listings that you see that that charge the fees if it's something that bothers you. But the, the thing is, it has become more pervasive. It's something that was common with a lot of very large landlords that saw this as an interesting strategy to increase revenue separately from rent and is spread to be like a standard practice. So it's getting harder to escape for uh, a lot of renters in many parts of the country. 
We've seen government agencies become vocal when enough consumers have been irked by fees. Airline fees come to mind. Have these fees levied on tenants caught the attention of anyone higher up? They have, both at the state and at the federal level. So at the state level, there have been a few places that have passed new regulations that either require more fee transparency or even cap how much you can charge for certain fees, such as like a pet deposit or application fees has been a target of some pieces of legislation. And at the federal level, the White House has had this kind of sustained interest in the way fees are levied across the U.S. economy. They've paid particular attention to entertainment. A couple of ticket vendors have agreed to show what are called all-in prices for event tickets that include all the fees up front. And now they've moved to do something similar with apartment rentals. So a couple of the largest listings websites, uh, the White House came out with a statement saying that apartments.com and Zillow had agreed to make sure that all listings include a list of fees and their total costs with the advertisement for the listed unit. And that was not always happening before. So that is a change. And many people use those two websites to find a place to move to. And it looks like there will be more transparency going forward. That's Wall Street Journal reporter Will Parker. And that's it for your Money Briefing. Today's show was produced by Ariana Osperu with supervising producer Melanie Roy. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Thanks for listening. 